the fairway wood. Quite a funny old club. For you to find that hallowed green turf or to reach those par fives in two, there really aren't many functions to it. These days, it goes from anything from a strong two wood to a, a nine wood. Yeah, a nine wood. What do you want from a fairway wood? Forgiveness, feel, sound, performance? There's a lot to choose from. So let's talk through it. I'm going to be talking through the personal opinions from Golf Magic and me here today from the last 12 months or so. You guys might have a different opinion. This is why I always say with these showcases, what we say may be different to your opinion. First up, let's talk about the Stealth. Making a big splash in January in 2022, the Stealth Metal Woods were one of the favourites and still are in 2022, going into 2023. What we found with the entire Stealth range was very positive. There was one caveat with the Stealth Metal Woods, particularly the Fairway Woods. We found that the Stealth and the Stealth Plus weren't very forgiving across the face. Comparing to other models in this video, the Stealth wasn't that forgiving, which is why overall I kind of would recommend the Stealth to a better player. I have heard some different arguments to this and a lot of people who get fitted have said that actually it works very well for them and they are a higher handicap player. Although I absolutely love the way it looks at a dress, especially just a normal flagship Stealth, I would like the face to be a little bit deeper, which is why it hasn't gone in my bag yet. It produced really good numbers when I had it on a Trackman about six to eight months ago with slightly low spin. Unfortunately, I couldn't really transition these numbers onto the course, which is why I didn't put it in the bag. As well as that, I don't think it was the right combo for me because that low spin, that's not holding a par five green at all. I usually want somewhere about three to 4,000 spin for a three wood, and this was going about mid 2,500, which is what my driver gets. Aesthetically, I do think it's one of the best fairy woods out there, but I think it needs a little bit more forgiveness to appeal to the masses. Performance wise, pretty good. Forgiveness, not ideal. Callaway, however, it was a little bit of a different story. Callaway Rogue ST range came with a bit of a splash again in 2022, but I don't think it was as revolutionary as the Stealth. It wasn't shouting with a red face or a brand new carbon bit on the face as well. Nothing really that crazy, but it still did really well. Initially, I don't think the reviews were as explosive as its competitors of the Stealth, but slowly, more of a long-term review, people realized that what Callaway did was pretty special. For a range that's already existed, has iterations, you wouldn't think there'd be anything that different, but the little increments such as the elongated shape, the deeper face as well, makes this an extremely forgiving fairway wood. I've got the LS in my hand, which would be the tour model, but I still find it very forgiving. I wouldn't recommend the LS itself to the high handicappers, because I think down at address, it looks quite small, it's quite a compact shape, but when you're going for Max and the Max D, and they have three offerings, they're a lot more elongated, the face is deeper, and it looks extremely easy to hit off the turf and off the tee. What this means is all the little improvements together made these fairway woods extremely good. I had the Rogue ST in my bag for the majority of this year until I switched to another, which I'll get onto. But the forgiveness on top of the actual really nice feel as well makes a really nice three wood. I think as an all around performer with that real benefit of forgiveness, the Callaway Rogue ST, if you're looking for that, if you're looking for something that can help you out, this I think is the one to consider out of all of the fairway woods this year. With all of this technology for every single fairway wood, there's nothing that revolutionary. I say this a lot. They can put a different word in there, use a thorus and get something different. It is all mainly the same, but what you will find is the ball speed consistency from Callaway this year is extremely good. I hit it everywhere across the face, literally. I hit it on the hosel sometimes as well, and I still get some pretty decent results. The numbers were very good too. Slightly higher spin, slightly more forgiving. Not as fast as the Stealth, but I'm finding more fairways. Lovely. Let's talk about Cobra. Cobra's LTDX range was extremely impressive for a few reasons. When I tested it out back in January when I was doing speed training, the drivers especially, I was getting an extreme amount of ball speed across the entire face. I had various selections for the drivers. The fairway woods for me disappointed me a little bit just because they weren't as amazing as the drivers themselves. They are good, but I think the feel isn't as positive as others out there. I'm comparing it to the Callaway Rogue ST. I think the Cobra is a little bit tinny, let's say off the face, and the feedback you're getting off the toe and out of the heel is also a lot more noticeable. That is largely because I don't think it's as forgiving, but if we're looking at the actual aesthetics of it, I think it's one of the best looking out there. The previous Cobra Rad Speed was a little bit of a miss in terms of the aesthetics, the difference between the shiny and matte finishes across different models, and just the overall look of it, I think was a little bit too cheap, let's say. The Cobra LTDX is a really big improvement and I really like how it looks down at address. With the changeable weighting and the adjustable hosel as well, there is a lot of adjustability with this, which is good so it can tailor to your swing. The one I've got with me today is the Draw Bias Club, so we'll see if I am able to draw it. This hasn't been in my bag at all for the last 12 months, purely because I think there are others that I got better numbers with. However, when price is an option, Cobra literally always wins. Cobra is a good 10, 20, 30% cheaper than the other big competitors such as TaylorMade, Titleist, and Callaway. You have to ask yourself, what is the big difference here between that percentile? Are you getting that much diminishing performance? 
the actual answer is no, you're absolutely not. Although I don't personally like it, mainly because of the feel and the numbers aren't optimal for me. If I were to be able to get a custom fitting for it, I'm sure I could get it up to, let's say, Titleist and Callaway. I'd literally recommend Cobra to anyone because of the price and the varying options and the adjustability you get in the changeable weights. But I would recommend trying it out because as always with all of these clubs, it's not for everyone. What's left? That's why I shouldn't use a draw club. Now, my personal favorite at this moment in time is the brand new Titleist TSR range for the Fairy Woods. That's just a blanket statement for a few different reasons. For me, it performed the best because it's professionally fitted towards me. It comes with a really high level of performance and it's very confidence inspiring for the model that I picked. There are three models currently in play for the TSR range, which is the 2 Plus, the 2 and the 3. The 3 being the most adjustable, but I actually went with the 2 because the way it looks down at a dress really is incredible. It's kind of gone back to the old Fairway Woods styles of 10 to 15 years ago, but they're very large. When I compare this to the 910, which is 12 years old, it was a lot bigger. And it's got an extremely deep face as well. So I've had no trouble hitting this, well, I've had some trouble, but I have no trouble hitting this from the fairway and also off the tee. This is just about my fairway finder. I think, especially with Titleist, there is a very large range to choose from here. Some people think the Titleist range is for the better players. I do think that is the case for a lot of the things they do. But if you were to look at the two and just see how large it is, how deep the face is, you really could compare it to, let's say, how Callaway is in terms of how deep and how inviting it really looks down at a dress. So don't count it out just because of the price. Don't count it out just because of the stigma that Titleist gives sometimes. It's a really good club and it really does offer a lot of forgiveness, which you'd be surprised by. Lovely. The last brand of the day we are going to talk about before we get into an overall summary is a bit of a surprising one actually, Honma. Honma has, uh, has been through the wars over the last few years from a tour perspective, especially with Justin Rose not doing well with them, switching clubs and then doing very well again, has really hurt them. But they do produce a lot of really good clubs. Their new TW757 range was a little bit inconsistent. Didn't think the driver was very good. I was actually getting about four or five mile an hour less ball speed, and it was really, really expensive. I was lucky enough to try the fairway wood as well, the actual one I've got in my hand here today, and that I was really impressed by for a few different reasons. Although it hasn't got an adjustable hosel, which I'm not really a fan of, the club itself is very forgiving, and it really is a nice looking club, down at a dress and also just the actual aesthetics of it. It's a really nice carbon crown, and it is quite large as well, very similar to Titleist and the actual look of it down at a dress. That coupled with the feel as well, it really kind of is Titleist brother in a way. I was really impressed with the Fairwood when I tried it initially. Unfortunately here today, and one of the caveats with Honma and this one is the stock shaft offering for me, and I think for a lot of people, isn't the right one to go down. They do say it has some technology with it to make it really good for it, but a stiff 50 gram shaft which is very flexy, almost regular, I would really encourage getting custom fit for this, which is quite difficult because Honma usually is in the JDM and it doesn't really have that many sockets anymore in the UK and Europe. I think this is gonna go left. I was hitting this earlier today on the range and I could not get it to go straight because the way in which the shaft flexes I really like a very stout shaft, and this is the exact opposite. So I've got no idea where the club head is throughout my entire swing. So blooper reel, here we come. Yep. Fairway Woods are truly one of the most important clubs in your bag. You need to be comfortable with them and you want to be able to find the fairway every single time. Pros use them a lot and we should use them a lot too. With there being a lot to choose from, I hope this video has helped. If you're looking for forgiveness, Callaway I think is the one to go for. If you're looking for overall performance, just a really good club with every single facet ticked off, I think Titleist is the one to go for. Cobra and Taylor made are still good as well, but in all honesty for those ones, I wait to see what their offerings are in 2023. There are many other brands that I haven't talked about, such as Srixen, PXG, Mizuno, and don't worry, we're gonna talk about those at a later date. But with many brands releasing some new products in the next three to four months, I thought I'd just give an overall opinion of the last 12 months or so, and then see what happens with all the exciting stuff in the next three or four months. Guys, let me know what your favorite fairway wood is of 2022. As I said, everyone's opinions is different. So if you have a different opinion to me, let me know down in the comments, because you guys could love the Stealth, you could love the Cobra, or you could love a brand that I've never heard of before. So. Let me know down in the comments and let's open up the discussions. If you are new to Golf Magic, guys, smash that subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all of our videos. As I said, super, super exciting stuff coming up in the next three to four months. I cannot wait to show you it all. I barely know anything right now, but in a few weeks time, I'm gonna know it all. So stay tuned for that. That's it from me today, guys. I'll catch you at the next video.